Let's get some discussion on the UN moves and we are joined by Jamil Ahmad who is Vice President of Market Research at International Broker FXTM. Welcome to the show uh, Mr. Ahmad. So let's start by talking about where the downside, uh, where the line in the sand is. Um, many analysts have mentioned 6.8, now it might be 7. What do you think? Yeah, thank you. So clearly we're seeing a resumption of yuan weakness. We believe that the dollar yuan will gradually weaken towards 7 against the dollar and there's a couple of different reasons for this. Now, Firstly, the Chinese economy is still struggling with some low inflation. So by weakening the currency a little bit further, we will increase import pressures, which would increase inflation potential. At the same time, the China economy is still trying to strategically move away from importing from others and towards building a domestic economy. Now, if your currency is weakening, it should encourage local consumers to be looking locally for products, and this would again be helping to build a domestic base and at the end of the day this would also fit into the PBOC strategy which would be to rebalance away from exporting and importing from everyone else. So if it's 6.8 or 7 this year, how much more downside do you see next year? Well, at the moment it would slightly rest in the US Federal Reserve, so we have to watch out for what their intentions are for 2017, but I personally believe... But surely what they do and what they flag the markets for are two different things. Uh, exactly. That is why it's very hard to provide a projection for an emerging market asset could be in 12 months from now. What I would say is what I'd look out for is this. At some point before the end of this year, we should hit the mid 680s. And if the dollar remains stable, and if the US Federal Reserve do carry through with our pledge to continue raising US interest rates, we should slide toward the mid 7s seven, next year. But at the moment, it's a wait and see to see what the Federal Reserve really do in reality. Mm -hmm. So, given all of this, what should investors do? You mentioned mm -hmm. offline to me that maybe long the euro and the yen and short the pound. Yeah, well, these are possible trade and trends to look out for. What I would say at the moment is to stay calm over the weakness and not to panic. Listen, what's happening here is nobody in China has before experienced currency weakness. But for somebody like I was saying who comes from the UK, I'm very used to currency fluctuations and right now what we are seeing is the British pound hit the floor. And you're very glad you're not paid in the pound. I, I'm paid in euros, which is the only reason why I could smile right now at the uh, pound weakness. Um, we do believe that pound weakness will continue as a trend. The euro could steadily appreciate as we conclude the year and into 2017. The reason for this is because the ECB, European Central Bank, have probably run out of options when it comes to easing stimulus. And as we've seen with anywhere else, including the Federal Reserve, if you don't have options to ease monetary policy and if you're going to take a stable path when it comes to monetary policy, your currency could find a bid. And you said also you think the gold has more upside potential. I do believe that gold could be a potential asset for investors. I think in the short term what we're looking at is the US Federal Reserve rate rise, which is why there's been a precious uh, metal sell-off in October. But when you consider uncertainties such as slow and global growth, not just domestically in China, when you also look at the upcoming EU referendum uncertainty and what could actually happen or not happen with the Brexit, on top of these issues such as global debt, other external uncertainties, there's reason to believe that gold is still a potential safe haven asset and that's why I'd look in to see what happens after the Federal Reserve raise rates if they do raise interest rates in December. And globally you think there's just such a scarcity of yield that uh, investors are just jumping into anything that has returns. That's the thing. We're living in an era of ultra-low interest rates. Uh, monetary policy has been eased left, right and centre. And because of Everything this... Everything is slow. Yeah, the growth is uh, subdued. And investors are searching for yield. And that's why what I would look out for now, actually, with the recent yuan movements, is if we see a correlation emerge where local currency weakness results in stock market growth, such as the Shanghai Composite. Obviously, we've seen this trend before with the Yen and the Nikkei, the Euro and the German DAX, more recently the British Pound and the FTSE. So what I would look at is if investors look at this recent RMB moves, and if the PBOC seem to be content and will not try to stop the depreciation, then perhaps this could be beneficial for the local stock market. Okay, good call. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. in. And I uh, look forward to seeing you again. Sure, sure. Thank you. That was uh, Jamil Ahmad, Vice President of Market Research at FXTM.